how long you've been in the game? Um, I guess, I mean, dancing I've been doing for a while, but I think the escort's been like a year and a half. Maybe, hopefully, it's 11.30, hopefully, something will come Wednesday. This is where all my money goes. Kodo, it's taken over the country. The whole country, it's taken over. Well, this one is the with the M's. These are the most popular ones. M30s. You can do these many different ways, but the most popular is swinging them. And one of these won't get me high, it's just to keep me from not being sick. I don't really get high, high off of them. Like, to some point I've seen people who they can't function, they're so fucked up. I can do 20 of them and probably still walk out the door if I'm not drinking or doing Xanax with this. If I'm just doing this straight all day, every day, I can, and I'll be fine. Like that other chick, she was like blue in the face crazy from doing well this is the synthetic form of heroin she was doing this and straight heroin and uh, but we did the same amount of drugs and she was on the on her ass and she's bigger than me I don't know what that said my tolerance is really high I guess we do it long enough Well, that'll just hold me over so I don't get the chills and the sweats and then you start getting I mean it takes a little bit more time before you start vomiting and diarrhea yourself but it'll just hold me to make me feel normal that's all it does it doesn't give me high it doesn't make me feel like anything but normal it's crazy someone I loved that I was with passed away right in front of me and my girlfriend's boyfriend just passed away and it, it didn't affect me in a way that I would think oh I need to stop I did more doubled everything like I wanted to feel no pain because I was, went into a really bad depression and all I would do is cry myself to sleep and eat Xanax and cry and drugs and I was very deeply, deeply depressed for a long, long time. And I felt nothing. I mean, I shut everybody out of my life. And I was pretty much isolated and just dealt with all my emotions until I came to acceptance. And that took a while. It took a long time. But now, since then, I don't get as fucked up unless I'm on a call and it, you know, they're partying hard, then yeah, but I don't get that fucked up on a daily basis like I was every day when Isaac passed away. I was doing, I was blowing, I blew so much money, mm, it's crazy, I blew a lot of money just to, just to not feel anything or feel high to get rid of your your reality of what you're going through Isaac. He was uh, my my boyfriend for two years. Uh, he died in 08. How did he die? 
Oh, who knows? But from what? Um, Roxycodone, Oxy80, Xanax. Man, that's mainly what he did. He thought he kind of died slowly. His body, bowels started going throughout the a day. He wouldn't go to the hospital, and then I was there when he took his last breath. And it was just me and him in the room. Died in your arms? Pretty much, yeah. I heard him make that last grasp, and I ran from the bathroom in our bedroom to the to the bed, and his eyes were rolled back, and I kind of touched, you know, freaked out, but at first I was like, touched him, like, wake up, wake up, and then it was just me and him, and he was just gone, and I knew he was gone, and I knew he wasn't coming back, because he told me his last words were, I love you. We were in the kitchen, and he just randomly said, I love you, and hugged me. Went to his dad, said I love you, and hugged him, and went and laid down. So I, I kind of knew that that was probably like his goodbye when he just knew. So like, That's kind of weird. Huh. So. How much do you spend on a daily basis on your drug habit? About $100 a day. It's about equivalent to 10 of those rocks you put on and some Xanax, which are cheap. Do you like what you do? I'm not happy personally, but you know, it pays the bills, has some perks. So I, I'm gonna work through the season try to put some money away and, and plan for that and hope that it goes successfully. What's the busy season in this business? Winter. It's when all the snowbirds in New York, up north, everywhere come down to their Florida homes, play golf every day, and party every night in Miami or Fort Lauderdale, sometimes West Palm Beach. Brianna Sky. Where'd you get the name from? Um, I came up with it by myself. But I got Sky from because the sky is the clouds in the sky are perfect and I'm perfect just like the clouds. How old are you now? 27. How long you been at school? I was 18 years old. My dad um, died a year ago from a, a drug overdose. And um, it was one of the worst things. It hit me so hard. And it was like, for a minute, for about two months, I felt like I couldn't go on. Because he died from blues. And it's like, Yes, it is what it is. I gotta move on and get past that. What's blue? Roxy Conal? He was taken 80 blocks of the day. And uh, he went to the hospital. And uh, he was complaining of shortness of breath. And uh, they didn't do nothing about it. Two minutes later, he died. He had liver failure, he had oxygen in his blood, he had kidney failure, um, he had um, hepatitis C, B, and A, and um, just eventually caught up to it. One of the most, I can't believe my dad died in a game 
name of it and all these people doing them, they still don't get it. That it can kill you like that. Like, guys are just such suckers. They're so stupid. How do you just give a girl $200 and expect that she's going to stay in your house for two days? You know what I mean? I guess that's just how the game goes. I started stripping almost a year ago to the day. And, um, I just, I talked about it, you know, over a month, trying it and trying it. And then I just came to a point where... I knew what kind of money I could make a lot quicker and sit in the club, you know, talking to a bunch of different people, getting petty change. So uh, I tried it out, I heard about it, and um, I just started making mad money, and I got addicted to that money. All right, so this is my uh, one of my drugs of choice, crack cocaine, stem. Crack. First, you gotta burn it on there. I mean, some people like to suck it to burn it, but I don't do it that way. Alright, once it's all burnt in there, you can take your hit. choose it. <laughs> it controls me. Completely powerless. What can you tell kids out there to help them not take the same road that you took? Stay in school, hang around with the like right crowd of people, you know what I mean? It's not worth it. When you're in high school, it's fun, you know, you party and then before you know it, it gets, it gets out of hand and you go from weed to, you know, beer, drinking, and then just fucking a bump here, and then you find something that you really like, and you get hooked on it, and then you become a drug addict, and, you know, this isn't even my drug of choice, but if someone puts drugs in front of me, no matter what it is, I'm gonna do it. And that's what my life has come to, you know what I mean? So, just don't ever, fucking start doing it because it will ruin your life. Ruin your life. It's the heart it's the biggest battle I've ever faced in my life trying to quit. Why do you hate men? Because they're all assholes. They fucking treat women like shit. No man knows how to treat a woman right. That's why women are the way they are, because men are the way they are. They treat women like shit. That's why... Maybe that's why I'm alone. That's why I'm single. That's why, because... Well, first of all, there's... I haven't had anybody loyal to me. So maybe that's why I'm the most honest, loyal person ever, but it's so hard to find somebody that's, you know, the same way. Men are pigs. They want to fucking fuck whatever they want. They want to have their cake and eat it too. They all cheat, because I know, because I'm in this business. They're all fucking cheaters and liars. So, how am I supposed to trust anybody? Do you trust yourself? Yeah, I trust myself. Why wouldn't I trust myself? 
I know my limits sometimes. Well, I do now. Sometimes people have problems trusting others when they don't trust themselves. I trust myself. I just don't trust anybody else. I don't trust anybody. I think people are full of shit. They tell you what, what you want to hear to get what they want out of you. Out. What about your mom? She's a very bad alcoholic um, and a very bad gambler. She spends all her money on him and um, she just doesn't want to stop. She just wants to keep living her life like that and it hurts me that she won't stop for her own kids. What are you required to do when you go on these calls? Collect the money, be a companion. They're assholes and they disrespect me. Then I will just fucking take the money and fucking walk out. Sometimes I get really mad. And I have done things to them that I shouldn't. You know, I'll step on them, I'll choke them out, I'll fucking do something because they piss me off, or I'll just walk out. Other times, you know, they're great, they're fun, they throw money, it's great. But all in all, it's just tough business. And it makes me resent men. And I blame it all on probably my childhood and my father. That's probably why I blame where it comes from. He probably called escorts. Came out of 7 Eleven to pick up supplies that <clears throat> every girl that works before she works needs to make sure she has condoms. Um, so, you know, I, I get the Magnum because, uh, you know, they're, uh, they're bigger and, you know, if you don't want them to break or anything. And um, a lot of girls don't come prepared. And uh, the other day, I went on a two-girl call with a girl and um, she didn't have any with her. And uh, being it's 2011, it's not safe to not have them. And she, you know, did her thing without him. And uh, it's not 
my business to say anything to her. Um, but it's not safe to not have them, and you should always be prepared. And uh, she was bumming them off me all the time. And um, you know, it's just when you work, that's part of your your uniform. I guess you would say. Is to have your condoms. I get baby wipes. I get some cheap brand, you know, because I go through them so fast. Flushable baby wipes. I also carry uh, in my purse, KY silk, you know, just in case. I never bring money in the call, ever, ever, ever. Um, I leave it in the car or give it to the driver. What's your definition of an escort? Me personally, I look at it as companionship. We're two grown adults, and if we decide to have sex, we both consent to it. That's what escorting is. Companionship. Do you practice safe sex? Yes, and no. Uh, Yes, I will wear, can't wear, practice safe sex, but if the guy, if I know he's clean, and he obviously pays extra, no, I won't wear a condom. You just want to cook it till it bubbles a little bit. Then, um, this right here is cotton. This is my favorite part, like I like You just pull back a couple times and if the bubble fills up it means you're still in the vein. See so watch the bubble fill up. That means you're in the vein if the bubble doesn't fill. Then you're not in the My best friend, when I started shooting up like two years ago, um, she had hep C and she was in denial about it. So one day I didn't have a needle and I said, you know, can I use your needle? And she's like, oh, you know, make sure you bleach it, whatever. I didn't bleach it because bleach kills hep C. 
and I got hep C and I gave it to my mom and I gave it to my baby daddy because I didn't know. So now I have it. I mean, it doesn't really affect me unless I drink or whatever, but I got to get it tricked out. I'm supposed to get some interferon treatment that uh, it, like puts poison into your body and, and kills off the infection. But you always have it for your life. You can never get rid of it. It could just lay dormant and like not affect you. But I always try to keep my needle. I always keep my needles capped, and I keep them capped, and then I keep it in here if I'm traveling with it, so nobody comes in contact with it, because you can catch it. You know, if they poke themselves with my needle, there's a chance that they could catch it. Look in the mirror. Tell me what you see. I'm fucking lost. I'm broken. I put on a real pretty face. <laughs> But inside, I'm so fucked up. Are you happy with your life the way it is? Not at all. I'm actually happier before I do that shot than after I do it. Two years ago, Broward County was ground zero. It was the epicenter for pill mills in the United States. And we all set out to say, we're not going to have that in our community. These are eight of the 11 charged today in an Operation Pill Nation takedown. These doctors arrested today were nothing but hired guns. They were working strictly for greed and profit with no conscience about the good of the people they were seeing. December 4th and I found my roommate and his friend murdered. Tonight, lots of questions in the shooting that left two men dead. This all happened yesterday when a woman came home to find the two men dead from apparent gunshot wounds inside her apartment. Gunshot. His friend was laying on the couch. Clear shot. Neck, my roommate to his chest. <sighs> I came in and walked through the house, found them dead, rigor mortis. Went through the house, no one was there, the only thing was missing were drugs. Now it appears that these two victims were actually targeted. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office has ruled out the possibility of a home invasion, but there's still no clear motive here and no suspect. It's become a mecca of oxycodone. Uh, in the last six months, 6.6 .6 million pills were prescribed in Broward County. Uh, we only have 1.8 million people in the whole county. If you could tell your dad anything right now, what would you tell him? I didn't see my dad for two years. And then I get a phone call one night, and they told me he was dead. So if I could say one thing to him, I would tell him that I love him so much, and I'm sorry for not being there for two years. It kills me inside that I didn't get to see him for two years and then I get a phone call and he's dead. Oh, Lord, fucking Ratsy. <laughs> 